Hi everyone, welcome to another How I Made This. Today we're looking at storyboarding and it's one of my favourite parts because if the script is the written version of the animation, then the storyboard is the first step visually. I spend a lot of time on this step because I don't want to have to cut or redo shots later in the process if I don't have to. To start, I will use my script to create tiny thumbnails in my sketchbook. These are incredibly rough and because they're so small they don't need or allow a lot of detail. This means I can try out different compositions or camera angles quickly to see which works best. I have worked on post-it notes before, which is how I planned my short film glitch, and being able to see the whole project up on my wall meant it was super easy to spot mistakes and switch things around. I've also found using a template like this super helpful. Now I've been animating my own projects for 6 years now and I'll usually storyboard straight into my animation program, which is TV Paint 11 Pro. Once I'm finished I can move quickly onto the animatic. Eventually the boards will look something like this, but how do you choose which shot or camera move to use and what are common storyboard terms? Storyboarding is a super complex subject and I can't cover everything in this video, but here are a few of my favourite shots, camera moves and tips with a free storyboarding template you can download from the link in the description. So this is what my storyboard looks like in the template. Each rectangle is called a panel, and I have notes written beneath to show any extra information like dialogue, camera moves or location, which I've taken from my script. Above the panels I have the scene and shot number. A scene is a section of your story that takes place at a specific location and time. If this changes, for example if your character is at a park in the morning and then in the evening they're at home, these would be two separate scenes. Scenes can be made up of single or multiple shots. A shot is a single camera view, usually focusing on a specific element or character, and if the camera view changes this would be a new shot. Using different shots helps to keep things interesting. For example, if these two characters are talking for several minutes, it can get a bit boring if the whole conversation takes place in a single shot. So, depending on what you want to focus on, whether it's the character speaking or the reaction of the other character, your camera view will change. Next up are shot types. A long shot, also called a wide or full shot, will show the full body of your character and is great for strong movements and action sequences, while also showing the background too. Variations of this are a very wide shot, where the character is barely visible in the landscape, and an extreme wide shot, where the character might be present but is no longer visible. This shot is often used to introduce the audience to a new location as an establishing shot. An establishing shot can also help set up the mood of a scene and typically lasts for only a few seconds. Using an up shot or down shot where the camera will be placed either above or below eye level can help show power dynamics or scale between characters. Using an up shot can make a character seem powerful, heroic or dangerous, while a down shot can make a character seem innocent, vulnerable or powerless. A medium shot shows the character from the waist up. This is good for dialogue and showing a bit of body language and background too. Close up. Positioned from the shoulders upwards, this shot is often used to show detail in a character's expression. Extreme close up. This shot will typically focus on one element or detail like a character's eye or their mouth. Focusing on an object can help tell the viewer that the object is important. I often use this shot to add drama to my animations. Over the shoulder. This shot is good for dialogue and seeing the reactions of a character if someone else is speaking. Now if there are any camera moves in a scene I'll use a different colour and arrows to show the movement in the boards. Adding in notes beneath the panel helps a lot if the move is complex, and if I'm working with other people I need to make sure everything is as clear as possible. A couple of camera moves I've planned to use in the story time are Zoom in. You can use this to focus on a certain area or small detail in a shot. For this particular move it's going to be quite quick to create a bit of drama and will help me with the transition to the next shot. If you're working on a serious scene a very quick zoom in can make it funny, but it depends on what you're going for, so be careful with this one. Dolly in. 
This is a more natural form of the zoom in, as in live action the camera is placed on a track and moved closer to or further away from a subject. So unlike the zoom in, the world around the subject moves with the camera. For this shot, I want it to feel like the viewer is walking through the crowded room. Truck. This camera move is like dolly in, but instead of in and out, the camera will move sideways. For this shot, I've made the background longer so I can position the camera to follow the movements of character A as they jump from the seat on the left to speak with character B on the right side of the room. Now, my biggest tip when storyboarding would be to keep things simple. You don't want to draw all the details of your character in every panel because chances are you will change or get rid of a lot of drawings as you board. And adding unnecessary detail wastes time you could spend doing something else. In this story time, there are a lot of filler characters in the backgrounds, so I can either stick to basic shapes or put a number on their torso to keep track of their position in the scene, rather than drawing their full outfits every time. Since I'm working alone for this project, I can keep my boards very basic and messy, but if I was working in a team and had to pass these on to someone else, they would be a lot neater. Now when I'm ready, I'll send over the boards to friends to take a look at and get some feedback, clean them up and add more panels if I need to, and then move on to the next step in my process. As always, I hope you found this helpful. If you want to see more animations and tutorials from me, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post, and I'll be back with another video real soon. Bye!